Jeremiah chapter 25. The word that came to Jeremiah concerning all the people of Judah. So, the land, Judah, all the people is not only Jews, it's Gentiles too. Everybody that's in the land of Judah. In the fourth year of Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, king of Judah. In the first year of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, that would have been 605 B.C., plus or minus. I mean, plus, I mean, the dates, some dates say this, some dates say that. I mean, we have more dates of this. You realize we have the date when Solomon builds and finishes the temple? We don't have the birth. We don't have any birth dates in the Bible. Not one birth date. The which Jeremiah the prophet spake unto all the people of Judah. To all the people in the land, consume everybody. To all the inhabitants, that's definitely Jewish and Gentile in Jerusalem. So the message here is not just Jews. When we read our Bible and to rightly divide the Bible, because the Bible, because the Bible says, "Study and show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be shamed." Rightly divide the word of truth. The first thing we got to do is when we open the Bible, read the Bible, we got to decipher who is it written to. Is it written to the Jews? Is it written to the Gentiles? Is it written to the church? Or is it written to everybody? And yet, when we look at the prophets, there are also things right prophesied to the mountains. <laughs> That's not talking to anybody but the mountains. You take that literal? I take that literal. The 13th year, 13th rebellion, of Josiah, the son of Ammon, the king of Judah, even unto this day, this is the three and twenty-third, twenty-third year. The word of the Lord has come unto me, and I have spoken unto you, rising early and speaking, but ye have heart not hearkened. This is no fancy in the night. We have Isaiah, we have Jeremiah, and may, it may have been other prophets of God. Unnamed warning Israel, warning Judah if that if they don't repent and get right, Babylon is coming, the Assyrians are coming to, to Israel, Babylon's coming to Judah, and he's, they're going to destroy and they're going to take people captive. And they're not listening. And we are in a day and an age today in America that we tell people that there is a hell. Unless you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved, you are not saved. You are not going to heaven. I don't care if you got church, baptism, good, whatever. Without the blood of Jesus Christ, you are not going to heaven. You are going to hell. And the people don't hearken. They're not listening. And they think they're perfectly well, and Jeremiah is just full of hot air. And the Lord has sent unto you, and the Lord has sent unto you, lost my place, all his servants, the prophets. So there's more than Jeremiah, there's more than Isaiah, there, were, there are prophets, plural. There is more than just what we're reading. And some moron scholar is going to go out there, oh, we found the, 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 the writings of this prophet, and, and they're going to stick it in their phony baloney Bible like Yankee Doodle did with his hat. And ain't going to do nothing with nothing for nothing, ain't nothing, because the Holy Spirit said, 
66 book. But there are other prophets out there besides Jeremiah. There's other prophets out there besides Isaiah. There's other prophets besides Elijah and Elijah. And they're telling the people, get right, do right, and repent. And they're not listening. And there's all kinds of preachers. And they may not be pastors, but there's all kinds of preachers out the world today, on the streets, on the radios, on the TV, in pulpits, gospel tracts, one-on-one, -on -one, knocking on your door. Whatever they're doing throughout the world, they're out there. And they are the servants, the children of God. And God has sent them, going all the world and preach the gospel. Rising early, sending them, but ye have not hearkened nor inclined your ear to hear. And that's what's happening today. Now, on the flip side of the coin, it says the Lord has sent you all his servants, the prophets. Today, the Bible says, go in all the world and preach the gospel. What about those children of God that don't do what God tells them to do? What if Jeremiah said, God ain't going to, at one point, Jeremiah says, I'm not going to preach his word. There are even today Christians, born again Christians. They're not going out like God sent them to tell the people what God told them to, to, to speak, to preach. There are people who need to be warned by God through his people. And the church today is failing. And the number one failure will come to church. That ain't going to save you. Come to church Sunday morning. And if you die Saturday night at midnight, what do you do? Well, we're going to go to church. Hey? Go to hell, I'm going to go to church. So you would take for the assumption and the Lord has sent unto you all his servants, the prophets. The men that God said go, they went. I would assume that there are men that God sent and they didn't go. As there are today. And they have not hearkened nor inclined their ear. I mean, if you think everybody's going to get right and everybody's going to get saved, you got a different story. I don't know what planet you live on. They said, Turn ye again. This is, this is what the men of God, this is what Jeremiah said. Turn ye again now, everyone from your evil way. Repent. That's, that's repentance. And there are churches today, uh, you don't need repentance. You don't need to repent. Let's repent throughout the whole thing in the Bible. And from the evils of your doing. You're doing wrong. You're sinning. And dwell in the land, that's Jewish, that the Lord has given you and your fathers forever and ever, that's Jewish. Everything to do with a land is not church. Everything to do with the land is not Gentile. It's Jewish. There's only one group of people throughout the whole world have been promised a piece of land by God that's owned by God. That's the land of Israel to the, to the ascendants or descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Not Abraham and Ishmael. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and the twelve tribes only them. And the replacement theology is we're Israel now. We're the spiritual Jew. And we can go fight for a piece of land. That's what the pilgrims who got the black hats and became the Congregationalists did. That's what the morons did. I mean the Mormons. That's what the Jehovah Witnesses did. That's what the, the, the Catholics do. That's what Islam is doing. They're all going out for a piece of land. Some of them have the law, which only is for the Jews. Some of them has an artificial law. Isn't it funny how, of all the things that the Muslims, they can't eat pork. Oh, gee, where did they get that one from? Why didn't they say you can't eat meat at all? 
like some religions, you got to be a veggie. And what they do is they take what is for the Jews and they apply it to themselves what they want. Now, you go to any nation and any city of Islam and walk through and say, Hey, where's your battlement for your rope? My like, what? You're not supposed to eat pork or have anything to do with pig's blood. Yeah, it is. Okay. Where's the battlement for that root? That's in the law. You see, they nitpick. Go not after other gods to serve them and worship them. That's what Israel, that's what Jude is doing. They're throughout there. Asherah, the queen of heaven. Baal, the sun god. Molech. Probably into Dagon. And all the other gods <clears throat> of the land, of the Canaan. <coughs> and the churches have got the gods, and I've said them over, and I've said them over, and I've said them over. The church has got heroes. Valentine's. They'll even make little hearts. And they'll even have maybe little cupids in their churches. That cupid is a god. Or you got Ishtar. You call her Esther. And instead of having pictures of her boobies, if you ever look at her picture, she's got multiple boobies. You have your children go after the boobies in the yard of the church. They're called eggs. Or you got Tammuz. Happy birthday, Tammuz. You call it Christmas. You ever look at the celebration of Christmas in England? It had nothing to do with Jesus Christ at all. With the Druids and the log and the Yule log and the trees and all that. They are worshiping other gods and the churches today are worshiping, serve them and worship. They're more faithful to Valentine's Day. They're more faithful to Easter and to Christmas. Even Easter and Christmas. These are the two times of the year that even the people who don't come to church go to church. Really? Even the Catholic Church I went before I was saved. I remember certain my family would come Christmas, the candlelight mass. They never went any other time of the year. Christians and Bible churches, you can't miss you know the birthday of Jesus. You can't miss the resurrection service, though it according to the calendar, it's not the resurrection. And provoke me to anger with the works of your hands. Well, we were in one place there making uh, dough and cakes to the Queen of Heaven. They're probably making little doodads and little, you know, idols and worship and stuff like that. They got crafts. They're taking care of the the uh, the grove. They're burning incense to the fallen gods. They're checking their newspaper every day to, to, to open up the pages to find what the horoscope. Look at this expression. You ever hear this expression? I will do you no hurt. The expression is, I will do you hurt. If you repent and get off your evil way, get off of your evil doing, and get rid of your gods and stop serving them, Stop worshiping them. Stop angering God with the works of your hand. And there'll be no hurt done to you. But we know they don't. And we know there's war and famine. And there's crisis and problems and death. And we have the book after Jeremiah. Book of Lamentations. Yet ye have not hearkened unto me, saith the Lord. It's the world today. Okay, we had, last week, I think it was, we had a building collapse in Miami-Dade County. They're saying it's global warming. 
and the West Coast and Canada, they're getting this extreme hot weather where there's deaths and there's fires, and it's the climate change. And we got COVID-19, it's China. And they're not pointing to God, saying God's trying to lighten our eyes to say, hey, he's not happy. He wants attention. And with those attentions, he's sending out people preaching. It's a shame. They're not listening. You're not hearkening to me, saith the Lord, that you might provoke me to anger with the works of your hands to your own hurt. Keep on doing it. You're going to get hurting. Therefore, thus saith the Lord of hosts. Because you have not heard my words. That's churches too. There are churches that don't have the word of God. There are churches that they get little inspirational messages. Not from the Bible. There are Sunday school classrooms where they get lessons from veggie tales. Because they're vegetarians and because they're, they're, they're vegetables. And they haven't grown their retards by growth of the word of God. And when they do hear the word of God, they get offended and they try to shut it up. Behold, because they haven't heard the word. I, I will, God will, God will send and take all the families of the north, saith the Lord. Okay, that's who the I will is. And Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, my servant. That's a Gentile. I believe Gen uh, I believe Nebuchadnezzar gets saved. I believe we will see him in glory. And will bring them against this land. Babylon's coming. And they have enough to learn that that Assyria came into Israel. And Israel did not have one king that was right. Judah has some good kings. Judah has the example of kings that had great revivals. America at one time had great revivals. America has examples of our, our, of our forefathers. I don't mean the government. I mean of the Christian brethren that lived right and did right. Where they shut bars down where theaters were shut down and families went to the altar and families went to church and they prayed and got right with God and fathers would lead their family in reading the Bible in America. You can't read your Bible in a public school. You can't have the Ten Commandments in the courtroom. By the order of the Supreme Court of America, you cannot stand in any courthouse property. And don't care if it, and don't care the public sidewalks or anything like that. Courthouses have been ruled by the Supreme Court. You can't stand out there and pass out gospel tracts, hold gospel signs, or preach the word of God and tell me, because I've had the U.S. Marshals call me and my family off Norwich Courthouse in Norwich, Connecticut. And when I went and called my lawyers, no, you can't be there. Well, what about the sidewalk? No, I don't care about the sidewalk law. Courthouses, you are forbidden. Against the inhabitants thereof and against all these nations round about. That'd be the Canaanites. And will utterly destroy them and make them an astonishment and a hissing and the perpetual desolation. Moreover, I will take from them the voice of mirth, the voice of gladness, the voice of the bridegroom, the voice of the bride, the sound of the... All right, so joy and laughter. 
parties, celebrations, feasts, they're going. God will end it. The sound of the millstone that's grinding, making cornmeal, grinding the flour, would be an everyday thing, except for the Sabbath. The light of the candle. You know what that is, you know, the candlelight. That one's going to blow out the light. The whole land shall be a desolation and an astonishment. And these nations shall serve the king of Babylon 70 years. Now there's that 70 years. I believe in Jeremiah. We're going to learn those 70 years. And they are 70 years. Is the years that, that Judah and Jerusalem has not given the land rest. You see, not only was there the seven-day Sabbath, but there were Sabbaths of the feast days. There was extra Sabbath days. There was Sabbath years. Sabbath year, you you didn't do nothing. You ate off the fifth and sixth year. And you didn't be, begin the, the plowing to the eighth year. And they were not holding to those Sabbaths. And God added up uh, how much those Sabbaths and said it's due. And it shall come to pass when 70 years are accomplished. That I will punish the king of Babylon, that would be his son, uh, Belshazzar. King of Babylon got right. Now why is he punishing Babylon? The servant of God. I will curse them that curse you. Don't mess with that Jew. Not with that blessing. That curse will hold upon the ones that curse the Jews. What's the curse about? He's coming over there attacking them. Assyria attacks and carries Israel. There's no Assyrians. There's no Nineveh today. They're gone. Germany learned that. America needs to be careful how she, and she mistreats the Jew anyway. Having the United Nations in New York that despises the Jews, rendering to Ishmael the oil that we love to have, Ishmael is against the Jews. Allowing nations to launch missiles into Israel, allowing nations to take up land of Israel. America, we're, we're the great nation. We're, we're the one, the great empire. We got the great military. And we let the nation step on Israel. And we don't do nothing. But we have a big war in Afghanistan. We go over and conquer uh, uh, Islam, Islam bin Laden. Sodom insane. Well, what about the king? What about the kingpins that attacked Israel? Why haven't we gone over and conquered them? Why have we not used our missiles and our military upon Hamas? England did it for Jordan, the Belfair Declaration. They 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 said Israel, you can have the land, and they took it back for peace. Say the Lord, for their iniquity, the land of the Chaldeans, will I make a perpetual desolation. And Babylon's a desolation today. They say Babylon, the hanging gardens, and Babylon is one of the seven wonders of the world. And it's not there. What's their iniquity? They mistreated the Jews. They cursed them. I will bring upon that land all my words. I will curse them that curse you. 
which I have pronounced against it. Even all the written in this book, Jeremiah's book, which Jeremiah has prophesied against all the nations. For many nations and great kings shall serve themselves of them also, and I will recompense them according to their deeds. Get your just, just desserts. And according to the works of their own hands. So what will happen with the works? Revelation 20. Revelation 20. Revelation chapter 20. Verse 13. And verse 12. Verse 12, chapter 20, verse 12. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. And the books, plural, were open. Another book was open, which is the book of life. And the, dead, and the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books. Plural. According to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it. And death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged every man according to their works. There's coming a day on how you mistreated that Jew. Okay. You get no favor with God. Now, favor with God at the second advent, at the end of the tribulation period, to the sheep nations enter into the millennium. Because when, when I was hungry, you fed me. I was in prison. You visited me. When I was sick, you took care of me. And they're like, when do we do that? When you took care of the least of my brethren, you who's God who's Jesus' brethren? The Jews. And to the nations, the goats, God says, Depart from me, the, from the workers of iniquity, because when I was hungry, you didn't feed me. When I was in prison, you didn't visit me. When I was hungry, you didn't take care of me. When I was injured, you didn't heal me. Well, when did we do that? When you did it to my brethren, you didn't do it to my brethren. So the, the, the blessings of the children of Israel in the tribulation period, the sheep nation, go into the millennium. They blessed the Jews. And they didn't even know they were doing it. And the nation that, 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 that triumphs over the Jew, that does not respect the Jew, gave the Jew a hard time, even had the Jew murdered and didn't help the Jew, cursed the Jew, they get cursed by Jesus at the second advent. And we're going to stop right there. We'll pick up the rest of that Jeremiah tomorrow night, Lord willing.